Grand Hotel in Fairway Square, as Brett said, for the local day, 7th of March at York Hall. I'm pleased to be joined by this wonderful gentleman sitting here beside me for what is a cracking card. What I'm going to do is just go along the table and just introduce everyone a little bit and then we'll hand over to Brett just for questions and don't want to talk too much. So on my far right, we've got Robert Sagba, who well, I'm very pleased to be on the card making his professional debut. He's managed by a very good boxing guy in Ben Doughty, and we're very pleased to be able to give him the platform to show his very good skills on the 7th of March. Next to Robert is Jimmy Perry. Now, if you see Jimmy Perry in his first profile, it was an absolute war. Jimmy Perry has the type of style that no matter who he fights, whether it be a boxer, puncher, it's going to be a war, you're going to want to turn up. Jimmy just has one of them styles, and on the 7th of March, I'm sure he won't be spoiling again. On to my immediate right, Rakeem Noble, as we give the title of the fight, it's the Noble Day. Rakeem makes up the Noble part of that headline title. However, not to give any confusion, Mr. Noble isn't fighting Mr. Day. It just happens with both at the, the top of the bill, but against different opponents. So Rakeem come up against, stepping against the number two Croatian fella, and uh, we're looking forward to his impressive, continuous impressive run so far. To my immediate left, Mr. Ben Day, who, who needs no introduction. If you know Ben, Ben's one of the nicest guys in boxing. He owns a gym in London, not too far from here. And he's had some ups and downs that have been well documented, as well as, I said, he's one of the nicest guys that you could possibly come across in boxing. I'm very, very pleased to be able to give him the platform on the 7th of March to go for his first title in the International Masters. And uh, you know, in his last fight against Ben Nella at the end of last year, it was an absolute cracker. He took a couple of rounds to wake up, which gave me some nightmares to be honest with you, side, but he did manage to wake up and he did manage to put in the performance he deserved to get the win. And on my far left is Matthew Chandler coming to his third fight. Matthew stops a good guy in his second fight, looks really, really impressive, and he's just continued to improve all the way through. So we look forward to his third fight on the 7th of March. We'd just like to hand over to Brett now for the questions to the guys. All right, we'll start down here. And again, we'll just move across the table. Um, we'll go for questions from our internet audience and then questions in the room. Um, so first up, Robert Asakwa. Um So Robert, I've got a couple questions for you. One from Roy from the internet. I've seen Ben Darty has been hyping you up on Facebook, but I've never, ever heard of you. What have you done to say, Ben? That's a contradiction in terms, by the way. What have you ever done to make Ben make these lines? Uh, first off, he has heard of me because he just said he has. And secondly, it's not hard. It's not hard at all. From 2014, when I first decided to turn pro, I've been, I was in camp with Colin Lyons in preparation for the English travel. Since then, I've been in camp with Larry Akindero, Freddie Turner. These are championship level fighters. And I feel like I've never ever been out of Ever. So I was born to do this. I was born to be, to, to be a boxer. He's, he's going to see, he doesn't know yet, but he'll see. And Julie says, Asagwa is an interesting surname. Where does the name Asagwa originate from? Asagwa, well, my, my father's side of the family, obviously, and it's from Nigeria. Nigeria. Yeah, but Nigeria loves me, so you know, I'm a winner. So you're a fighter. <laughs> you're a fighter. <laughs> All right, any questions in the room? All right, let's hear it from Robert Asafa. All right, next up, Jimmy Perrin. Um, Jimmy, Parker29 on Twitter says, why have you been so inactive? Um, everyone knows it's not really a lot of money boxing. I've got 12 hour shifts, seven days a week. Um, I'm on the hand lines on the cross rail. So I was just uh, trying to fit it in. You know, it's just uh, well, one week days, one week nights. It's kind of the training, you know? Yeah. That's, that's basically it, really. Yeah, I, I gotta say credit to a couple of you guys that I talked to that work full time jobs and then try to fit boxing and training. You, know, you get off the 12 hour shift and you think, God, I gotta go to the gym now, really? You spend a couple hours in there. So, yeah, hats off to all you guys that are working hard and trying to fit this in as well. So, love so well that. Uh, Harry Johnson says, what's the beef between you and Brent Osborne? The uh, beef between me and Brent. When he was in the license uh, boxing, he was supposed to fight me. 
And uh, he pulled me out, I think it was two weeks before, saying that, say, stating that he couldn't make the weight, he didn't sell enough tickets, he wasn't well, loads of excuses. And then uh, basically, it was because I was inactive. Uh, I asked Steve if uh, maybe I, I didn't want to like, like heavy, instead of two we'll come back and die with him. So I wanted to cut so much weight, and uh, me and him, never, never disrespect him as a fighter, he said he'd be a good fight, and um, we could put it to rest. And then Brent started saying he'd knock me out and all this and that, but he wouldn't do it. He definitely would do it. No chance. No, no chance. He knows. He knows. Uh, I've spoken to Steve, I've spoken to Steve, but maybe I didn't make with him. I didn't even fight him like anyway. So it's, it's up to him. Questions from the audience for Jimmy? So we had a fight. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 like, I like having a fight. I like having a fight. You know, I, I never said I was going to be the best boxer. But what I do do, I get I fit, I'm durable, I'm strong, and I punch hard. And uh, the things I, I, I lack, I make up with other things. And um, if people wouldn't stand that wall with me, I love that. You know, I, I, I like, I, so people like seeing it. I like giving people what they want to see. So if people would stand there and have a trade up with me, I was smiling, I'll, 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 I'll get the same back. Right now? Yeah. Alright, any other questions for Jimmy? Alright, let's hear it for Jimmy Parent. <laughs> Alright, Rocky Noble. Rocky wants the extended version of this, so let's have some good questions. So, Rocky, uh, we'll start with this one. Dion from South London. You've built up a seven win record very quickly. Is this a false record or is it a sign that you have the pedigree to be a champion? Definitely pedigree to be a champion. I've not been versus the gentleman throughout my whole time. I first came by that I've come to win, prepared their bouts. My last bout was against kids who support most people for a training camp, just like me, stopped him. First day deal, number competitive fight up, stopped him. First another kid came to fight, came to win, stopped him. So all of my fights so far, majority of Competitive, and I've put in the performances to back it up that I am the champion of the bacon. Okay, Lucy says, You obviously train very hard. Do you have time for girlfriends or is it boxing only? <laughs> I train extremely hard. Training is my life. I don't come out of the training camp with the fight over, with the day off, back in the gym. But I do have time for a girlfriend. She's in the front row right over there. <laughs> So she's the only girl that's my life right now, but other than that, training, training, training. She knows what it's like. I wake up, train, go to work, come home, train, come home again, sleep for a bit, train. That's my life. The training camp never ends. I was going to say I was going to give you Lucy's contact details, but maybe your girlfriend will have to be sad. All right, any questions for Rocky? All right, let's hear it for Rocky Noble. Brian from Facebook says, I saw your last fight against the kid from Portsmouth at your call. You didn't seem with it for the first three rounds. What happened? He just... <laughs> 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 uh, Fourteen months out, I think. Um, don't forget, like, I've had some fights. Too wide close to turn bro. I'm very sorry I'm not with it. You know what I mean? It takes a little bit of time to get with it. Give me a break, we're actually tiring. I'm 35 years of age. <laughs> I used to drink a lot as well, so. <laughs> that actually leads nicely into our next question from Ryan St. Um, Almond. He says, at your age, do you think your career is limited? I don't, I don't like this guy. Um, I'm passionate kids in the, in the gym there, and they're like 15 years younger than me, yeah. 10 years younger than me, and they're kind of like, I was in round six or seven, I don't even have to get now, but. Um, he was, he was on the floor, and I had to put him back in the ring, so I had to finish with him. So, it doesn't mean anything. I'm ripped. I'm fit. But what, what does he do, anyway? Exactly. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Watch this. Yeah. But he's fat. And 
one final question from Tyrone James on Twitter. Um, I see you own a gym. Is it not hard work to work at the gym and train in the same place? I don't train in the same place anymore. I, I did the first um, five fights, and everyone was coming up to me talking about membership and that shit. And, oh, I'm tiring. Um, but Jack Redden's at the back there. Smart. He helps me out, he covers it. But, you know, the, the business is 24 hours a day. You know, if you run it correctly and you run it well, it's a success. You know, it's like, it's like having a child, you know. So, I don't know how to do it. I really don't. But I'm bloody good at it. Yeah. All right, any questions from the audience? Hey, um, by way of introduction, Kevin described you as one of the nicest guys in boxing. Can I ask uh, for the sake of detail, who's the other one? That's a joke. No, in, in, all, <laughs> in, all, in all seriousness, I know that you're... I'm seven, nasty. In the ring. I know that your seminal inspiration for boxing was Vince Nassim Hamid. And to watch you in the early days when I saw you pre-fight... Did you see me on fire the last time? <laughs> I know that that was initially, it was almost like stars in our eyes, and there's the impression, it was quite convincing in the gym. Obviously, you get a bit more mature as you go along, and you had seven fights. Now, can I ask what's changed since those days of flat out trying to imitate Hammond? Doesn't work. <laughs> 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 you want the truth? It works to a certain level, it's just trying to um, turn it on and turn it off. No, when you can do it, when you can get away with it. But, um, like I said, that, that last fight, I just. I just ran into shots for, for a laugh for a bit, when I? See if I could take his shots and then, and I was elusive, I didn't get caught. So, it's just it's getting, it, getting it right in the ring. I could do it at the gym all day long, you know, and I have been, but I just need to get it right in the ring. And as soon as I do it, I'm in trouble. Thank you. Any other questions for Ben? Ben, uh, your next opponent's 2 0, and he's not. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's not uh, his opponent having the first round. Does, does that worry you, or do you prepare any different for that? Give a shit. <laughs> like, he hasn't been through what I've been through in my life, so, no. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, let's hear it for Ben Day. <laughs> and last but not least, Matthew Chanda. Matthew Francis on Twitter says, the division you're in looks wide open. When do you think you'll be ready to challenge for a Southern Area title. Um, as, soon as, I, as soon as I get the win belt to challenge or win? Yeah, well, when, when will you be ready to challenge? Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, just, I'm just looking at who's next. And um, doing, a, doing an impressive job and who's, and who's next and showing I'm ready to, to fight um, yeah, for the Southern Area title as soon as possible, really. All right, and Bill from Facebook says, is it hard to get sparring partners at your weight, and who have you been sparring in preparation for this battle? Um, it's hard to find sparring partners. My, um, um, my weight, yeah, but it's not hard to find sparring partners. I, I'm, I'm used to sparring um, fighters who are, yeah, who are um, well, a couple of weights heavier than me and stuff. So, um, yes, it's not, yeah, I wouldn't say it's, it, I wouldn't say it's hard, no. Um, and, yeah, to fight, to fight people my way, it usually maybe fight am um, amateurs. Um, we go, we go to um, um, is it a boxing club? We um, we train at sparring gym and just fight a few fighters who are from amateur there as well. And um, yeah, just travel around. So it's not really not difficult now. Any questions from the audience for Matthew? So Matthew, I remember seeing you on the amateur circuit around about ten years ago, boxing for Clare and Men. Given your um, Given you're one of the lighter weights who are traditionally supposed to peak earlier and burn out that little bit earlier, um, has it taken quite a long time to make the second time professional, relatively? Um, well, I was, um, he saw me about 10 years ago, but yeah. I, I, I took three, three years out because I um, was, yeah, I had an injury, and um, so I, I, I wouldn't say, um, I mean, my body hasn't, hasn't, hasn't taken a lot of damage. I mean, I, 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 I don't try, see, I don't, I don't, I don't smoke or. Excessively, anything like that, and um, I sort of am 
I would say health for health week, but I do uh, make sure uh, I eat well and um, drink well and stuff. So my body holds up and stuff. But, yeah, I still feel like even though I mean I st- I've, I've got injured when I was 20, 24 when I came um, came back, I still feel like I'm um, yeah, I still feel like I'm there 24, 25 sort of thing. So yeah, I still feel fresh. Any other questions for Matthew? Yeah. Um, how have you prepared differently for this fight than the, the other two fights that you've had? Um, definitely. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm still adjusting to the pros. I mean, the ad- damages is is is, lot, is quick and fast paced and stuff. Um, so I mean, probably start in my in, in my in my first um, my, uh, my my debut against Anne uh, Anne Mar Freddy. Um, I was I was jumping about to the right place and stuff. Um, and in this in my second fight, I was I was sort of not back footed, but I tried to settle down a bit more, and it shows the, the power of the. Um, why well, I ended up stopping him, and the power came through. But then you can say Animal Fadi is more tricky, you not know, the bar comes off, and, and um, I can't remember what's his name. Uh, uh, Price. That, um, Price um, sort of um, gave me more openings than um, Animal Fadi did. But um, yeah, I think maybe setting down, think my power time, take my time, and um, also, yeah, letting, letting, um, yeah, getting the power through, I think. So. Matthew. How about one more hand for our boxers, Robert Chilean? So, so I just want to thank everyone for coming tonight. It's been a long evening. We've had some light issues and you've all been very patient. Tickets are still available for the, this show if you want it. Please see one of the boxers who can post them online. iboxingtickets.com where you can buy the tickets direct from the boxers as well. So I mean, I look forward to seeing you all on the 7th of March. Thank you very much. First off, I just want to say, every boxer that's here, it takes a lot to be a boxer, so I respect every fighter that's here. On March 7th, I'm not looking to win, I'm looking to make a statement. I just come from the gym, I've been here, I'm going back to the gym. I mean, boxing is my life. March 7th, I want all of you to be there, I want all of you to watch and see what type of show I'm on. Thanks. I want to say thank you as well for that. I respect that completely. Guys like that is what boxing is about. Guys that put their life in the life of the sport, that train daily, that live their life. But I just want to tell you one thing. Don't go march no more day, that's my day. It's my day to shine. I'm the star of the show. The time will come soon. If I respect what you're doing, so keep at it, bro. Nice. <laughs> my response to that is there's room for both of them on the show. So uh, you can both work and say that, then come back and we can do it again. I'm so. Yes. Yes. They're all going to be dwarfed the next week by Luke Prince for telling us. <laughs> 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 I just have to say as well. I just have to say as well um, to the whole Goodwin team. We've had three press conferences tonight. Three amazing fight cards. I'm looking at every one of these shows. Like, I just can't wait. I think you've done a fantastic job. So well done to the whole Goodwin team. Yeah. And I think from, from tonight forward, it's going to be Kevin Lights Out campaign. <laughs> All right, well, we want to interview you. Again, there's posters in the back. If you guys want posters, grab them. Um, and that's it. Thanks a lot for coming. And that's been a really long night, so I appreciate it.